Hello and welcome to another video on cryptography services. And I want you to remember this little phrase here. Well, this little word. You can pronounce it however you want. Kanra is how I thought of it. Kind of a random word. Think of it however you will. But this is the acronym that we'll be going over in this video. When studying for the exam, just keep in mind that this is really the crux of what all the questions are going to be, is what type of cryptographic function or technology is going to achieve which one of these services. So what type of algorithm, what type of uh, whatever it is that's, that you study has to fit into one of these services, and you have to be able to tie it there, kind of like in Domain 4, where all the, all the technologies and devices that you study and attacks have to fit into one of the layers. It's similar with cryptography. And I, I believe that's just my opinion. Anyway, so the first service is confidentiality. You see, I've highlighted the C here for our CANRA acronym. Confidentiality can be achieved through encryption, and you can do this with either asymmetric or symmetric cryptography. So make sure that you understand fully how to do that. Symmetric is fairly easy because with symmetric, all you have to do is make sure that you're using the same key when you send the message. With asymmetric, it's a little bit different because you have a public key and a private key. And this was a hard concept for me to, to grasp. And so the way I liked to think of it was the public key, or at least one of the keys being an automatic lockbox of the public key, and then a private key being the one that can open that box. So a lockbox that you wrap up your message in, and then the private key would be the one, the only thing that can open it. So if you remember, we have a separate video on asymmetric cryptography that talks about how these are mathematically related in such a way that when you encrypt it using a public key, only the private key can open it, can decrypt it. And the same thing, if you encrypt something with your private key, only the public key, your corresponding public key, can decrypt it. So with that said, we have a sender over here, and he's got a private key and a public key. And remember, these are just values. And so the private key is kind of hidden here, so you know he's going to keep it secret. And the public key anybody can have. Anybody can use this public key to encrypt something and it'll be wrapped up in that nice little box and then he's the only one who can open it with this private key. Receiver, the same thing. She's got a private key. She's going to keep it secret and she's got a public key. So the way to achieve confidentiality, and I believe that the other video we have covers this in detail, but just real quickly, the way to achieve confidentiality with asymmetric would be if this guy is sending to her he's going to use her public key to encrypt something. And that way, only she can open it. She can decrypt the message with her private key. If she wants to send something to him, it's the same thing. She would use his public key and only he could open it. So authentication is another service of cryptography and you can achieve that a couple of different ways. Uh, digital signature is one way and we do have a separate video that covers what a digital signature is. So be sure to check that out. You can also use message authentication codes, and these are also called cryptographic checksums. And make sure that you always know, or at least are aware of the different terms that can be interchangeable in the common body of knowledge. There's a lot of them. So some examples of message authentication codes would be the HMAC, UMAC, CMAC, and so on. With integrity, we have another video, I believe, on that covers the hashing. Or if you remember, there's a, it's, I believe it's in our cryptography terminology, or maybe our introduction, or no, it's our architecture terminology video, where we talk about what a hash is. And a hash is basically, I like to think of it as a description of a document. So for example, if we have a small file here and we make it into a bigger file, it's gonna have a different hash or a different description. And a hash is a one-way function with a fixed output. And that's how you achieve integrity. So you have systems that will check files for changes, unauthorized changes. Non-repudiation refers to the inability to deny. So with cryptography, we have that service that's achievable, and there's a number of ways to do that. We have a separate video on digital signatures, digital certificate, and I believe we have a separate video on digital certificates as well. And we have a separate video on what a PKI is, a public key infrastructure. So you could do it a number of different ways, but these are some of the components that you could use to achieve non-repudiation. So with digital signatures and digital certificates, you definitely need a public key infrastructure in place. Access control is another service that's offered by cryptography, and you can achieve that through the use of secret or symmetric keys and don't get secret and private keys mixed up. That might be something that trips you up on the exam. Access control can also be achieved through hybrid cryptography, the use of TLS, transport layer security, 
or HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, secure. You can also achieve this through use of a public key infrastructure. Once again, thanks for watching. Head over to cissprep.net where we have over 1,200 practice questions and our free super study guide that covers some of this stuff in a little bit more detail. There's some things we didn't cover in this video, such as the MD5 bit length and the SHA-1 bit length and all those, some of those other historical things. You may or may not need to know that for the exam, I don't know. So if you'd like me to do a deeper dive on any of these topics, let me know in the comments and I will do the best I can. Thanks and have a great day.